The 6.5 is on the road here at Snapdragon Summit 2024 in beautiful Maui. Daniel, it's great to be back. I mean, we've seen innovation in mobility. We've seen innovation in automotive. We got a little bit more information about the PC market. It's been pretty exciting and, you know, big, big AI wrapper uh, across all of them. Yeah, this event has evolved so much. While the location has stayed the same, a destination I think anybody would be happy to come to, it's been really great to watch the company evolve. You and I have talked over the last several years about the company's diversification strategy, That's right. how it used to report and how it is reporting now. It's entering new markets, but more importantly, it's not just entering markets for sort of the PR value, it's entering markets and winning. And I think that's been a big theme here is not just what are we doing? It's what are, what are you know, what is Qualcomm doing? How is it being successful? How is it being measured? And the thing is, Pat, it's executing on that diversification strategy. It is, and particularly with automotive that wasn't even discussed uh, five years ago. And I remember being at, at, at CES and they said, hey, we're going to take a ride. We have ADAS. And I, and I said, wait, you guys are doing ADAS? Really? I had no idea. And now from a backlog perspective, it's a juggernaut. The last three or four quarters it's come up uh, as earnings is, is the biggest biggest growth segment growth segment out there. So with that said, let's bring the star of the show here, the leader of automotive and more, Nicole. Welcome back to the 6.5. Good afternoon. Yeah. A regular here on the show. It's been great to watch the evolution. I think you kind of heard Pat and I talking about that in the buildup. I mean, just a couple of years ago, it was very, it was handset, 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 maybe some IP and licensing. And, you know, there was a promise made I, really when Cristiano took the helm that the company was going to diversify. It's gotten into IoT. It's gotten into PCs. It's you know been able to you know it really dominated that RF part of the business, and then of course automotive. It's been an incredible run. But talk a little bit about that. Every year when we catch up, kind of how's that going? How's it evolving? How are your customers feeling? How are you feeling about the business? You know, I, I feel like we are uh, we are the adult in the room in the automotive business because we've been doing this for a long time now. I mean, uh, I know everybody in the industry. We are uh, all living through the same complexity, the same challenges, the same competition. Uh, and, uh, you know, it feels good because uh, technology complexity in automotive is quite a difficult thing. Uh, automakers are traditionally, you know, uh, have been optimized for many different things, manufacturing, uh, scale, uh, global footprint. But as you start to bring electrification, as you start to bring software, as you start to bring driver assistance, the skill set development that is needed is a pretty complicated thing. Yeah. And what we've been able to do over the last five years or so is actually think about how do we become more relevant to our customers beyond the things that they expect of us anyway. That's the journey that we've been on. And uh, you know, I think we just basically uh, do what we say we would. and. Uh, I think customers have shown that they trust us and uh, I think the results speak for themselves. Yeah, it's it's not only do I remember that that first CES uh, ADAS ride uh, with the compute uh, in the trunk, but also a conversation we had when you had first uh, started the business. Now you were operating in stealth for a while, but this was the first time you had come out. And I remember you uh, talking to me about the strategy of really meeting customers where they are. Um, some want an integrated package. Some want uh, piece parts and put them together themselves. Others want parts of the solution, which is a combination of the software uh, and, and the hardware and even the services uh, that, that come together. But, you know, it's really cool to have you at the event. I, I, I was always asking, why isn't there automotive at Snapdragon Summit, right? And this year was the first time that you came there. I think that's a really good uh, for the company to do that. You made some major announcements today, two major product announcements. Uh, you had a customer, uh, a design win on stage, uh, a lot of stuff going on. Can you tell us about the announcements? So we announced the Snapdragon Cockpit Elite and the Ride Elite. This is our fifth generation SOC in uh, eight and a half years. So you can imagine from the time that we started to get into the compute business to where we are at, this is... Uh, this is a juggernaut. This is a beast in terms of, you know, so when we talk about central compute, right. this defines what central compute is going to mean for the car. Now, think about where we are coming from. We are deployed across every automaker in terms of driving some form of ADAS, a lot of cockpit for pretty much every automaker. We are in the second generation, maybe the third generation 
uh, design cycle with most of these automakers. So we have a pretty good idea as to what it is that uh, we're going to have to incrementally change and what's going to have to change that's going to be far in excess of what anybody had imagined. Those were the inputs that we took. We've had a lot of customers provide us input into what they want to see designed. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited about what we can do with this product because already I can tell you from the time that we lock specs down to the types of questions that people are asking, I know that we're going to have to start to think about architectures. How can you double this up? Where is AI headed? Uh, one principle that we adopted a few years ago, which was a very important decision that we made was we will only design chips with full safety. We are not going to design anything that appears like, oh, this is a smartphone chip. That means chip. like ACLD. ACLD at IP block level. Okay. So there are various types of ways that you can do safety. We design every single, so if you take our NPU, it's designed to be safe. So if you have to certify the software that's running on the NPU for ADAS, it has to go through safety certification. And that level of rigor is going to be needed if you have to do these things at scale. You can't, there, there are no shortcuts really. So operating at that scale, I mean, there are many different ways to you know, enter into these markets, but we've taken an approach, we are sticking with it. Customers appreciate the directness and the strategy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you heard from some of them today. Yeah, we talked to uh, Cristiano too, and, and you know, he was talking about how this is a future-proofing effort too. And some of what you've been able to accomplish at Qualcomm has been pretty remarkable in terms of, first of all, just the continuity that's being created across platforms, starting to see that there's some, some unity. Yeah. It's not like yeah. a car business and a PC business yeah. and a phone business. Yeah. You're seeing this SOC really start to, to mature where, you know, obviously you customize for the use, but also there's a lot of IP that's you know, really usable and reusable and scalable. And that's really exciting because you have to be constantly upgrading. You have to deal with the fact that innovation is going fast. You're hearing about robo taxis. You're hearing about completely full self-driving. And then you said earlier, I like your quote, we're the adults in the room for automotive. So part of it is like, yeah, the future is like, you're not gonna have a, you're not gonna have a steering wheel. You're not gonna have pedals. You're just gonna get in the car and you know, you're gonna, you know, will you read the newspaper? Of course, on your device. I'm joking. But, you know, you've got this rapid evolution that's going on. I mean, talk about kind of where your head is at with that. Because, like, are we going to this robo-taxi era? I mean, the events just happened. Are we going to driverless? And what do your OEMs think about this and all your partners as well? You know, let's talk, let's talk business first, right? There are 90 million cars produced every year. That's the business. So we spend a lot of time focusing on the cars that are produced, that are purchased by people like you and me. Sure. And uh, that's where the content is, that's where the experiences are, that's where the safety is. And most of those cars are, uh, uh, you know, trying to get to the next rung of experience differentiation. So when you think of something like what we've announced, it's to be able to think about in the next five years, what are the likely differentiators that customers are going to be focused on? And how do we make sure that we position ourselves very well for them, for ourselves. Right. And if you understand how to go do that, then you're just planning for what is to come over the next three to five years. And as you saw today, we have customers from all over the world. We had Lee Auto, we had Great Fall Motors, we had Mercedes, we had Rivian. And it was to give you a bit of a sense as to how broad and really uncorrelated the user feedback is that we receive. Right. And uncorrelated is very important because you want to make sure that you are able to not think for your customers uh, what they would like to go do. The other piece that I really appreciate about a lot of these customers is that they are also building roadmaps of experiences for their customers. Their platforms are also improving. They're also thinking about what more can they put in. To your comment about robo taxis and uh, just ADAS in general, you know, the bet that, we had, that we've made is we are going to focus our stack efforts on the passenger vehicle segment. And the SOC efforts are obviously broad-based. These SOCs, the Snapdragon Ride Elite, can be used for L4, L5. You can get a constellation of them together. But our stack efforts are very focused on passenger vehicles. So I think robotaxis- It's know, coming, I, but but you're building for the business and revenue that you're promising the market. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, this market, you have to be super focused on what it is that you're gonna get up in the morning and do, because, uh, you know, these products have to be launched. These programs are all very critical. It's a complicated business. And uh, if there are new things that we can do, they have to be sitting on a foundation, uh, first of all, the silicon and the architecture of the silicon that allows us to have a conversation with the customer that says, I would like to build a robot taxi stack on this, can you support me? And now with these platforms, the answer is yes. Uh, 
where that market goes. I think that market is uh, you know, going to keep evolving and become, I think it's going to get segmented into the types of environments where you can apply a robot to transport uh, humans. And uh, some, uh, some are fairly benign, fairly straightforward environments. You can take college campuses, you can take uh, you know, adult living facilities. And then you can take downtown San Francisco and New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, you kind of have to find the set point for where is the economics uh, going to start to make sense? How much do you have to do to maintain the software? Uh, what are the savings that are being accrued by customers? So we have a fairly straightforward position on these types of things. Certain things we observe very closely to understand what role we can play. Certain things we will bet on ourselves. I think in robotaxis, we are focused on being the silicon supplier. Yeah, so it looks like you're addressing the, the meat of the market, cars that people actually buy, but with an architecture that can scale That's right. to, to the future. Exactly. Regardless of the L exactly. that, that you want. Is that L6? Sure, if you can make that one up. Yeah, well, there we go. My phone's on 7G. Yeah, you heard it here on the 6.5. Um, hey, it's, it's a great conversation. Really incredible announcements today. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the future. I'm not asking you to disclose roadmap. I mean, you just brought out. Just did. Just if, did. If you want, right? But what's the focus going to be for the next year uh, for you? What things are you even looking at now? Well, I think AI is uh, certainly top of mind uh, because, uh, I mean, I'll give you some examples. Uh, I think the car is one of these platforms where there is a tremendous amount of intelligence that exists inside the vehicle. But the way that software is architected and subsystems are architected, the information is not uh, something that you can capture to create intelligence that you can learn from, that you can share, that you can deploy, that you can uh, develop your new roadmaps off of. And uh, that's something that we're going to be spending a lot of time on. Uh, already, you know, the questions that we're getting from a number of customers tell us that uh, you have to be able to, you know, really correlate different types of uh, different types of data points in the car that when you assemble together, create very valuable information. And especially when the industry is going through so much of change, new product introductions, EVs, getting into new markets, if you don't have that real-time feedback, it is very easy to actually not be able to uh, you know, get your roadmap right. The, your investments can be wasted. So we're spending a lot of time, both in terms of how to apply AI to the workflow in the cloud, how to connect that to what is happening at the edge, and then build information from that together. Yeah, so it's uh, kind of data data inputs, what you do with the data. There's a lot of data management yeah. uh, it yeah. involved, yeah. and then uh, how you activate the data, regardless yeah. exactly. of if it's you know hybrid, exactly in the cloud yeah. or the car. That's great. And of course, with so many design wins, it's execution focused, right? Make sure that these customers that you brought over the line feel great about their designs because this is a multi year process. I mean, the first win leads yeah. to the second win, yeah. and then it's getting the whole the whole map, all the designs, all the models, and then eventually, right? I mean, if it's if you have anything to do with it, it's going to be you know owning. A, can they own one hundred percent of the market? I'm sure you'd like to try. Of, uh, are close to I'm that sure markets. I'm sure you'd like to try, but the the run up in serious Nicole has been impressive. The ability to gain, I still remember it was ten billion. That's right. I never wrote an article about uh, that when it was 10 and I kept ratcheting it up. Congratulations. I know, by Thank the you. way, Automotive is not the only thing you've got cooking, but here at Snapdragon Summit, it was the biggest thing. Lots going on. We'll have to have you back on the show. Thank soon. you so much. Yeah, cool. Thanks for joining Great us. Great to see you both. You too. Thank you. And thank you very much for being part of the 6.5. We're here in beautiful Maui. This is the 6.5. We are on the road. Hit subscribe. Join us for all of our content here on this site. But for Patrick and myself, it's time to say goodbye for now. We'll see you all really soon.